they say nunca surrender, which is is ne uh, never give up. They have the club motto. They have the club motto, never give up. So yeah, you know, you're always you're always going to be in a game. You can be three goals up with three minutes left, and you know when you're against Madrid, anything can happen. On the 8th of June 2009, Real Madrid's president Florentino Perez made the first signing of a second stint in charge of the club by paying 67 million euros for AC Milan's very own star boy, Kaka. It broke Zinedine Zidane's long-standing world record for the highest fee paid for a player and indicated a new era of Galactico signings at Madrid. However, the record only stood for three days as Perez quickly made his second signing of what would turn out to be a very expensive summer. That signing was, of course, Cristiano Ronaldo for 94 million euros. Although there could be arguments made that Madrid's greatest purchase of the era came four years prior when they unveiled their brand new training complex, Ciudad Real Madrid. It took 100 million euros to build, but houses both the first team and the various youth divisions, with many of the youth players using it as permanent accommodation. It's, it's a great place to go to, to have their schooling there on the campus as such. There's lots of pitches and um, all of our students prepared, so it's a really top class facility that the club invested 100 million euro into. So it's, it's made for them to succeed. They go there with the idea of learning the Real Madrid way, they, they come in and it's all about winning. Um, we're going to do what we can to win. We're going to we're going to give you the best education possible off the field as well and make it a home for you for the field the future. The complex has everything that you would need to train a football club with gyms, saunas, video rooms and recreational centres both available to the players and the coaches. It has 10 full-size football pitches, plus the Alfredo de Stefano Stadium, which hosts the games played by Castilla, Real Madrid's reserve team, which play in the third tier of the Spanish footballing pyramid. But, of course, it's not flashy pitches and a nice canteen which turn kids into superstars. The coaching philosophy is paramount, so who better to talk to than a coach Alex Clapham is a former member of the youth setup at Hatafi and has plenty of experience writing about Real Madrid and coaching against them. I think what they're trying to do is create players that they may not necessarily go to the first team at Real Madrid, but they may have to go to other clubs and be able to adapt and adjust to another system, to another philosophy. But you know, we, we, that, that was the main word I heard all day. You know, when we went. We played, him, we played him early on last year as well. We played him in September time. And they beat us in the last minute. It was you know, on a set piece, 2 1. And then at their ground, it was another tight game. But they just managed games. And they, beat, they beat us 1 0 in, in January. And you could, they've, just, they've got a culture of winning. Mm. You know, whatever they do to get over the line. Our, our centre back played him with Madrid under 19 when he was 17. He played four games for the under 19. So. You can just tell, like even if he lost the game in training, it was a, you know everybody around the complex in the tap knew that he lost. Really? Yeah, it's just a culture that as he grew up as, a, as an academy player and came through the system, and it's just you can't lose, you can't lose. So if, even if it was a three v three recovery session, and they were playing three v three games or head tennis, and the team lost, it, it wasn't happy. It wasn't happy. So yeah, it's a, it's a pressure place, especially I can imagine if you're a ten or twelve or fourteen year old and you know, there's pressure there to win, there's pressure there to win, which uh, creates, creates the culture in itself. Sometimes the weight of being at such a large club can weigh down on many of the youth players. You know, the stress, the, the pressure of being at such a grand historical club. And that can cause some players to leave. You know, ones like Alvaro Marata, Dani Carvajal, Mariona Diaz. They have left and come back there. Maybe some of the success stories, but even more fail to make the grade and as a result fall down to the third, fourth and fifth tiers of Spain or to less paid leagues abroad or out of football altogether. A good example, when, when we went back to the was that we'd, we'd signed a player from them and as soon as we got off the bus he saw his ex-teammates and he saw, you know, obviously where he managed to select. When he played there and his face sort of dropped and I thought, Ooh. And in the first 10-15 minutes, he, he 
years from the treatment psychologically, it was a bit too much for him. And I, that's when I started to think that might be why you didn't, you know, you didn't end up getting a contract and right. get kept on here. I think you do have to be a certain type of person. The way that Madrid go about signing players for their youth divisions though can sometimes be based off more of a, a personal touch than any sort of financial strength. Of course the aura of Madrid stretches into every footballing home across the globe and scouts can use that to their advantage. So they have a South American scout called Juni Calafat and he's basically working in South America and he's their, their head of international recruitment. But he's out there looking for the best talent he brought Vinicius Jr. in from Flamengo and Vinicius went into Castilla and played for them and became a first team player. Uh, Calafat also at the same time was working with Renier and his family and he spent three years negotiating and talking and building relationships with Renier's family uh, who comes from the same club Flamengo um, to eventually get him signed. Uh, there was also interest in Renier from PSG, from Borussia Dortmund and, and several other top European clubs. But Real Madrid were able to snap him up because of Calafat's relationship. There was trust built there with the family as well, and they decided, okay, Renier, uh, Real Madrid is the best place. I've, uh, I've heard stories, you know, with uh, the players in the team that we played against on 12,000 euros a week. Really? Uh, at under 19s, yeah. And, uh, you know, there is an ugly side to it as well. They are making payments to clubs and payments to parents to try and prize them away. Uh, but that's football. You know, they're offering an opportunity for somebody to play one of the biggest clubs in the world. Because of Madrid's financial power at the moment, they can afford to have hundreds of players on the books. But when the training complex gets a bit too busy, they make good use of the loan system. Ferry Valverde, Lucas Vasquez, Casemiro and Marco Sensio are all current first team regulars who have benefited from this. But the quality of player that they currently have away on loan at the moment almost trumps this with Udegaard, Hakimi, Vallejo, Odriozola, Kubo, Ceballos and Reguillon all developing at other top clubs. You know, Barcelona are always looked at as the beacon of youth development in Spain. But because of all of this, have Madrid surpassed their prowess in the youth department? They are, they are quite similar in the way that they will scout the best talent in the country, bring them in and try to develop them through to the first team. Real Madrid are, are more focused on winning. I think Barcelona are more focused on a certain style. It'll be interesting to see how Barca reacts because at the minute Madrid, you know, they're, they're, they're producing the goods as far as players getting from the juvenile under-19s into the first team is uh, happening. 